People don't often think that you can make your own fondant fancies, but you can. And I'm going to show you how in just a few simple steps. So I'm going to start by taking some soft butter. It's really important that it's soft, otherwise it will be really difficult to mix the other ingredients in. I'm going to add the caster sugar, and then this is going to mix until light and fluffy. You want to beat the butter and the sugar for about five minutes so it's really pale in colour, because that will make your cake rise really nicely. Add the vanilla extract and then the eggs, mixing well between each addition. If the mixture starts to curl a little bit, don't worry about it, because as soon as you add the flour, it will all be fine. Combine the flour, salt and baking powder in a small bowl and then beat into the egg and butter mixture. Mix for a further minute until you get a smooth, thick batter. So I've got a 20 centimetre square tin. It's great to have a square tin because it means you can cut the cakes into really even sized squares. Push the mixture right into the corners. You want it as even as you can get it so that it rises well. This is ready to go into my preheated oven for 30 minutes. To make the buttercream, place the softened butter and add the icing sugar. Beat on a medium speed under a tea towel so the icing sugar doesn't spray everywhere. You can remove it after a few minutes. Allow the cake to cool in the tin. Then remove and freeze for at least 30 minutes. So I'm going to start rolling out a layer of marzipan. Use two pieces of baking parchment so it doesn't get stuck to your surface and there's no need for loads of icing sugar. I want a 20 centimetre square so it will fit exactly on top of my cake. So the cake is really frozen now. Place the cake upside down so you've got the smooth side on the top. And to help the marzipan stick, just a thin layer of buttercream. Give it a press with your hands and then peel off the top layer. So now you've got your square of frozen cake covered with a layer of marzipan. So I'm going to slice these cakes into four centimetre squares. So I just use my ruler and mark along. Because I froze the cake before, it's so much firmer so it's easier to slice through and it creates less crumbs as well. Cover the edges with buttercream. Pipe a nice little dollop onto the top of each one. If any of them have got a point on the top, just want to gently dab it down with your finger. And then these are good to go into the fridge to chill completely for about 30 minutes. I'm going to be covering these cakes in a lovely fondant icing. I'm going to tear it up into little pieces, put it into the bowl of my stand mixer. I'm going to add half of my water and then turn on the mixer on a little slow speed. You'll notice the fondant starts to break down and it will turn into a nice even paste. You want to add a little bit more of your water. Add a splash of rose water. This is optional, but I think it gives the cakes a really nice, unusual flavour. Using this icing instead of just a normal icing sugar and water icing gives it a really nice glossy finish. Divide your icing between the two bowls so you can colour it separately. I'm just going to adding a few drops of pink gel food colouring to this bowl. And then I'm going to do the same, but with yellow in the other bowl. Grab the fondant fancies from the fridge. These are really nicely chilled now. You know they're ready when the icing doesn't leave a mark when you touch it and it won't fall off when you shake it. Now I'm going to cover the fondant fancies, dip them in using a fork, take it out, a little spin, and then push it up and down, touching it as little as you can. If you insert the fork at a slight angle, it makes it a bit easier to push it off at the end. And now I've got one piping bag with the white icing and one with plain chocolate that I've been melting over a bain-marie and do a nice zigzag on top of each fondant. I'm going to do the same with the white icing on the yellow fondants. So you want to leave these for about 10 to 15 minutes to firm up before you move them to a serving plate. They'd be great as part of an afternoon tea or just on their own as a treat.